it's better to use a crappy chainsaw with a sharp chain than it is to use the best chainsaw in the world with a dull chain. Daniel is a professional arborist, which means you are using a chainsaw for how many hours a day? Somewhere between eight and 12 normally. Every day. Each tooth cuts a little bit out like this and a little bit out like this so that it makes space for the chain to be able to go inside the wood. The teeth will alternate the angle they're at going down the chain. The depth guides kind of alternate sides just like the teeth. The depth guide basically keeps the saw from basically being just like sucked into the cut. The three areas I'm focusing on is this gullet here, this rounded inside edge of the tooth, this top edge right here, and this corner. So you are sharpening each, every other tooth right now. Mm -hmm. So pointing slightly down, there's a little line on the back of the teeth. I'm trying to match that angle. I'm letting the file do the work. I'm not putting a lot of pressure, but I'm watching and keeping an eye on all those surfaces. And again, this chain is a little bit tight, kind of have to go to, in at a weird angle and come out. Remembering too that files only cut on the push stroke. My dad used to tell me count your strokes and do the exact same number of strokes on every single tooth. I just sharpened this tooth. This corner is really sharp. This surface here is very flat. And if you look, you can see all this shiny metal where the glit is. So I have hit all those surfaces I'm looking for. This angle is matching this angle back here. If you're to pull back just a little bit and look at these next teeth, you can tell that it's just a little bit duller. The corners around a little bit. You can see this edge is eaten up a little bit. I've never had to have stitches, but I've had at least, at least four coworkers who've had to get stitches from sharpening their chainsaw. When it's super hot outside, 90 degrees, it's nice to have the dexterity, but when it comes down to it, it's better to have gloves on than to have either the injury or the medical bill. Safety first. Safety is more important than comfort, my friend. So, here we are, you've finally finished the whole round with the uh, round file. Now you have to come back because you're sharpening by hand mm -hmm. with the flat file and file down the depth guides, right? That's right. The depth guides kind of alternate sides just like the teeth. Um, so I'll cut this one going this direction and then I'll file this one coming this direction and alternate going down the chain. I did not remove a ton of material on these teeth, right. all right? So I don't need to do a lot. Honestly, with these, I'd maybe just go like one easy stroke like that. You're not going crazy on these depth guides. Again, if you do, your saw's not gonna cut effectively or it can create a dangerous situation. Do you do this, like do you alternate your position or is it just like the other one where you do one full side from this angle because it's repetitive and then you come back and do the other side? It's up to the individual. I know people who will just go straight on down the line. I personally just will switch hands. Oh, wow. And go down the line like that. So this is also something to be mentioned. This doesn't have the teeth on the sides like a lot of files would, which would be a big concern because as you're coming and filing here, if you missed it all, you would then actually dull this corner that you have literally just created. This is something we didn't mention a lot necessarily, but um, I engage the chain break every time I start filing and I try to bring everything so it's close and comfortable. I'm not reaching out really right. far, just bringing everything back close to me. Because then if you're way out here, you have a lot more variables at play. Yeah, right, a lot easier nice. to like go and slice your forearm or something like that if nice. you slip. But then if we think about like our the economy of our time, if you are having to swap hands, swap sides, everything, unless there's a very specific reason, this is extremely inefficient because if you are just going for an all purpose, you would just want to use the guide and you can do it all at once. Exactly. Really quickly. So. This little tool has absolutely revolutionized the way that I sharpen my chainsaw because it takes all of the guesswork out of everything. We've got both of the correct size files that can basically only hit the right part the right way. So when we set this file in, the tooth that it needs to cut, we know that, okay, we're going to push away this way. So we can't accidentally put it in backwards or anything. This part here needs to remain parallel with the bar of the chainsaw and that's why the tool is even shaped the way that it is. It's yeah. so that everything happens naturally. Yeah, and the file cutting the tooth, tooth will be on the bottom closest to the saw and the arrow will be moving forward. So as we're setting this up, we know, 
hey, that tooth that this is engaged with right now is the one that we're wanting to cut right now. So we are going to engage that on the side where the arrow is pointing. We need to then keep this thing level. If you're going to error, error a little bit down that way, not up. These two railings ride on the chain right here and this other tooth here. So you literally cannot screw it up, which is fantastic. All right, Daniel, prior to me having those file guides, mm -hmm. I went online and I bought just like a random mess of chainsaw files and hoped and prayed that they would be the right ones for the saws that I happened to have. Shock of all shocks, they were not. How the heck do we know what size file we're supposed to use? All the information you can find on the back of the bar. Okay. Um, it talks about the length of the bar. It says how many drive links there are. It talks about the pitch, which the pitch is the number that you need to know to get the right size file. Okay. And that gets a little bit confusing because the pitch isn't gonna be the same size as the file you need. The file's gonna be slightly smaller. So essentially what my recommendation is, go on to Google and put in chainsaw file chart. Okay. And it should be the first link that comes up. Perfect. And here's another pro tip. When you first get your new bar or your new saw, take a picture of this because I have a bunch of saws where I've now worn that picture off. Basically, if you don't have this information, you will have to go into a physical store and ask the tool representative yeah. what size you need for what. To easily put the chain back on the chainsaw, what I'll do is I'll grab my bar. Mm -hmm. Oh, didn't you also tell me every time you change the chain, you fl you swap the bar, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if it's you like a mattress, you swap if you it rotate to... the bar, you know, depending on whether you're changing blades or sharpening the chain, rotating it helps it so it wears evenly. Because that is one issue you can have that will also affect how straight it cuts. Is one side will wear down more than the other. Mm. So just rotating the bar you know, every once in a while will help you avoid that. So I will get my bar. I literally drape the chain over the bar, hold the end like this. So the teeth are facing that way. I'll go ahead and put it on that sprocket right there. So this right here is how you tension the chain. It, it moves this knob back and forth. What's well, happening when you do that? So there's literally a, a thread here that will push this knob back and forth. Okay. So the further back it is, the looser the chain's gonna be. The further forward it is, it's pushing the bar forward and that's the tighter the chain will be. Okay. So when we're putting on a new chain or putting a chain back on, we want it kind of loose. So I'll loosen that up, put the chain around the sprocket, have it rest on the chain, chain tensioner knob, flip it, and you see how loose it is, that's fine. As long as the chain is resting inside the bar on the top. Right now, this doesn't matter, but this absolutely does. Is yep. that this is all resting right where it needs to. Great. Yep. So then I'll put the cover also, back on. you mentioned to me that these <laughs> nuts get lost a lot, right? A lot. You know, a funny story is one day we had like a maintenance day at my job and the guy maintaining the chainsaw has been doing this for over 40 years. I grab my chainsaw to use it the next day. I didn't check it. I start it, start to make a cut, things start vibrating, all of a sudden the cover, the bolts, the chain, it all just falls off because these had not been tightened. Uh-oh. <laughs> so right now these nuts are still pretty loose. Okay. I hold the tip of the bar up. Okay. And you see how loose this is right here? Yes. So I'll go put my, so this is called a scrunch. A scrunch. A scrunch. It is a, a screwdriver, screwdriver wrench. wrench. So I just go ahead and tighten it. Okay. And you see all the slack is taken out of there, and I can kind of I'm still holding the front because sometimes when you don't hold it, it will it will oh, kind of right. rest down. Like the bar will literally. The bar will be uneven. Yeah. And that will adjust how the tension is affected. So I'm I'm holding it up. I can kind of pull this, and it seems pretty good, pretty tight. You don't need to go crazy, but it needs to be like, it needs to be pretty firm. All right, so if you see, when we pull this up, you can see like three quarters to one of these teeth 
and then it just snaps right back. Right, but like there, at no point can the guide actually get out. That's of right. The, of the thing. Yeah, and if we disengage the chain brake and roll this forward, it still rolls freely. It's not too tight. And also the first time you run it, let it run for a minute because okay. sometimes the chain will get a little loose then and you need to retighten it. But tension is still good. Also, <laughs> before either one of us ever goes out into the woods with our saw, we check to make sure that there's bar oil because mm -hmm. a lack of bar oil will cause what problems? All the problems, but mostly it will mess with your bar. It will just affect how well the saw runs. You know, this oil should be calibrated so that when you go through a tank of gas, you've gone through a, the tank of oil as well in the saw. Oh, so like in theory, every time we fill it up with gas, if we fill it up with oil, that should be the right ratio. Right. And you know, sometimes it's like slightly off, but you never ever want to run completely out of oil. This oil that we're putting in the chainsaw is just to lubricate this chain running on that right. bar because it's running really fast and it can get really hot. Um, and so yeah, if you don't have that, it generates excessive heat, it will cause warping, it will cause burrs, it just won't run well. So really important to always oil when you fill up with gas. So once we've tightened everything down, we're like, we're aware that this is where it needs to be. Like we've run it a couple times to like, we've taken yeah. off the brake so that we can go like this. And then we just double check one more time yeah. that we can pull it three quarters of the way up, but we cannot pull any of those teeth out of the guide bar that they're yeah. walking in. Which I might just put a tiny bit, more. tiny bit tighter, just okay. a tiny bit. Oh, and you see and how they I drop. I did see how that see did that? drop. So yeah, hold this up here. Just a skosh. All right, so now, where are we at? Looking pretty good. And again, before I went to town and like spent a whole day's worth of cutting, I'd let this run a little bit, mm -hmm. check it every like 10 to 15 minutes as a cutting, make sure that chain tension is still good. Because again, that is what contributes to a lot of bar wear and also some dangerous situations where the chain can get thrown. And that, you know, getting Don't cut with that. a chainsaw is bad, but also when that chain gets thrown, it can go right into your leg. Mm -mm. So chain tension is a big safety point. Great. Just now, after several years of using the guide, you now have chosen more often than not to use freehand sharpening. Why? Um, so at my job, I can go from cutting down a dead hickory tree. Which is very hard. Very hard. Um, to cutting down, say this summer we had like every cryptomeria in Nashville died. So extremely softwood to extremely hardwood. If I'm gonna be doing that all day, it's really nice for me to be able to adjust how aggressive my saw is cutting. Right. Um, again, with a lot of these saws I'm using that are really powerful, you know, professional saws, um, you can create a safety situation if your saw is being too aggressive. Safety first, production second. This set screw fell out of the engine while you were sharpening it. Oh, you know what that is? I'm pretty sure. Oh, I could be wrong. Um, I have this scaffold, scabbard. Scaffold, scabbard. This Scoundrel. Thing? Is this it? This seems uh, awfully small. It's pretty small. It's no, no, fine. no, that's not the right one. Is it's it? It's No. No, that's not the right one. Hold on. We'll find the right one. It's great. I oh, just broke good. it. Now you've broken everything. 